What's up everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing. Today I wanna to talk about restless leg syndrome. But before we jump in and get started as always, please like this video, show us a little support. Hit that notification button and subscription button wherever it is, so every single week on Wednesday when we release a video, you get notified and it shows us a little support, which we appreciate. Let's jump into restless leg, le restless leg syndrome, which is a neurological issue that kind of goes from the brain to the rest of the body. And the question is, why does this happen? Well, I think some of the times we understand it and other times we don't. What we do know is this, clinical, clinically, we have a lot of success with people that have restless leg syndrome. It affects their ability to sleep, their ability to relax. It causes anxiety, a plethora of symptoms because of this. Um, and really what it, what the end result of restless leg syndrome is mineral depletion. And what gets us there? Well, of course, we're living beyond our means. We're living in a society where we're go, 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 do, 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 right? We're not eating enough to meet our metabolic demands that are being placed on our system, right? So the demands being placed on our system exceed what our system can handle because we don't have enough energy right? Our money to go out and spend money, to live our life, just to live our life because we're going, going, going. And on top of that, right? People aren't eating a variety of foods. They're not eating medical, m m metabolic foods. People are fasting, trying restrictive diets. People are fear, fear, uh, fearing food. So it's just this, you know, day after day, week after week, you know, year after year, stress that's causing mineral depletion. And of course, we're not taking into consideration here, which is a factor, right? Trauma, you know, what happened in your childhood? How was your birth? Like all these different things. These are catalysts for stress because remember, stress isn't a thing. It's a physiological reaction that's happening inside the body. And that physiological reaction should happen, right? The problem is we're always here. It's always happening, right? It's almost like at rest, we're running a marathon. Our body is never slowing down. Our body is never quieting down. Another reason it's never doing that is because guess what? None of you are taking the time to slow down. None of you are taking the time to do things, enjoy life, play, do your hobbies, have more me time. We're go, 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 doing, doing, doing. And we think resting is playing on our phone with TikTok, watching Netflix, right? Or sleeping. Right, That is all good, but at the same time, how are we building resiliency? We're not, and this is why people are ending up with many disease and disorders, one of them being restless leg syndrome, because with that, we have minerals that are affected negatively. Our cells naturally want to pull, push out more sodium, pull in more potassium. This is very, very important. Unfortunately, in our carb-driven, stress-driven, sodium-driven society, right, it is impossible to do right? We're stress driven. And at the same time, when this happens, our cells hold on to sodium, which means they hold on to water, which calcium goes is in, causes swelling, high blood pressure, all these different issues, and it loses potassium. This becomes a huge problem, right? Because naturally, we want to get about 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day, which is hard to do on top of stress, and about a thousand milligrams of sodium. We live in a sodium driven society. Sodium driven society. Most people are getting 5,000 milligrams of sodium plus and maybe 1,000 milligrams of potassium. This is what is leading to many issues as well as restless leg syndrome. So when it's inverted and we're pulling in more sodium, we're losing potassium, that is stress to the cell. And we can't produce energy production. We produce exhaust versus energy. We're not putting money in the bank now. We're actually withdrawing money constantly because the demands being placed on our system exceed what our system can handle, right? With that comes magnesium loss. Magnesium is very important because it regulates over 300 enzymatic reactions in the bottom body. One of them, which is the very most important, is energy production. Without magnesium, right, ATP is rendered useless. Many people talked about this. Chris Masterjohn, Chris Kresser, uh, Morley Robbins, etc. So when we are using thyroid hormone, when we have enough copper to activate oxygen, we can produce ATP, we can produce all our copper rich antioxidants, right? Glutathione peroxidase, cytochrome oxidase, catalase, superoxidase, dismutase, etc. We can put out the little fires where needed that are created from different reactions in the body. This is homeostasis, this is health. 
But when we have chronic stress, when we have mineral loss, we don't have enough copper, we're not eating the right foods, we're fasting, we're go, go, going. We're not converting thyroid hormone because we have excess stress in the system. We chelate copper, we chelate minerals, and we burn magnesium at a very fast rate. So now, even if we produce energy, we need magnesium to latch onto the ATP so ATP can be used, right? But at the same time, when we're losing magnesium, we don't have all that and we're chronically stressed. We, we, we don't produce energy, we produce exhaust, right? So we start producing inflammatory markers like interleukins and cytokines. Um, and in a sense, what's happening is we don't have enough copper to activate oxygen and you need copper to recycle iron, so now iron starts building up in the system. This creates more oxidative stress. We have too much unbound copper or not enough ceruloplasmin and too much iron in the system, right? So this is kind of the complex version of what causes restless leg syndrome. What do we see? Well, it comes in two different fashions. People that have kind of those restless legs during the day, that is more of a potassium issue. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's like one or the other because I truly believe and we see clinically, we understand physiologically, that almost everyone I'm speaking to right now needs more potassium-rich foods in their diet. Potatoes and beets and salmon and bananas and oranges. There's tons. Uh, research, Google it. Uh, aloe juice, coconut water, etc. We need more potassium rich foods in our diet and we need less sodium. I don't care if it's Celtic sea salt, we still need less sodium in our diet because you're in this stress state. It's really not salt is the problem right now. If it's a healthy salt, it's just that you're such, you're so potassium depleted and so sodium dominant, you're holding onto so much water, you have to bring your body to more of a homeostatic level before you say, you know what, it is Celtic sea salt, it doesn't really matter how much they take in because they am getting enough potassium rich foods. That's the key. Right. If you got enough potassium, the sodium really wouldn't be a problem. Um, but people that have those restless legs during the day, that's more of a potassium issue. So you want to eat those potassium rich foods. You want to make sure you're getting the adrenal cocktail two to three times a day, which I would actually do eight ounces, six to eight ounces of coconut water or six to eight ounces of, of aloe juice with like four ounces of orange juice and a quarter teaspoon of Celtic sea salt, or even for some of you, none and use um, five to six trace mineral drops in them because you're going to get more magnesium in there, right? Trace mineral drops and more magnesium dominant or salt is more sodium dominant. So I would actually say six to eight ounces of aloe juice or coconut water, you know, two to four ounces of orange juice with five to six drops of mineral drops in your adrenal cocktail two to three times a day, right? People that have more of those you know, my legs are more twitchy at night. That's more of a magnesium deficiency, right? So, of course, you can use the trace mineral drops. You can buy the magnesium lotion for Jigsaw, which you can find in the description below. You can rub it on your legs, your ankles, your feet at night to help support that. You could do an Epsom salt bath instead if you wanted to. That works for some people, not others. We find the lotion works best, right? But here's the thing. The more you work on changing your environment, the more you work on eating more copper-rich foods and retinol-rich foods and metabolic foods like white fish, fatty fish, shellfish, organ meats, dairy, eggs, and muscle meats, roots, fruits, winter squashes, you're going to get the minerals you need, right, to meet your body's demands as you're changing how you're living at the same time, right? Because if you're, if you're still in the middle of a war zone, you're eating healthy foods, you're still going to deplete minerals. You have to look at your life and say, what is working for me? What is not? Make those changes. Start eating more metabolic foods. Get the calories you need slowly over time to meet your metabolic needs. Replenish your minerals so you can reduce that stress response. Because if you do that and your cells start pulling, pushing out sodium and pulling in potassium, you're naturally going to regulate magnesium. You don't have to stress about it. And you'll naturally support iron recycling, so the relationship between iron and copper will go like this, more copper, more oxygen activation, more energy production, more homeostatic environment, more balance, and that's what you're looking for. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'm out.